This screencast pertains to Module 3, Lesson 9, where we start working with unlike fractions and move from using pictorial models or diagrams, area diagrams, to using actual mathematics to convert to like units. Okay, let's look at this one. We're going to uh, examine this through the area model that we've been working with all along. We're going to see how we can do this numerically instead. So if we look at our problem here, let's look at the first model, one half, right? And what we've been doing is taking these two parts and then partitioning them, uh, duplicating these lines in the second rectangle. We'll also notice that this is a three into three parts, and our denominator here is three. So we're going to split this into three equal parts. And you notice that each part now becomes three parts with six parts in all. So what are we doing here? We're basically taking our one half and we're multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by the denominator in the other add end. So let's write this out. So I'm going to put parentheses here and we're going to do this. I have one times what did I do? I multiplied it by 3. I have 2 times, once again, 3. And if we look at that, and we found the uh, products of each of these, we'd see that we'd have 3, 6, and that's what's represented there. So now we're going to do the other add-in, and we see now that we are going to split that, each portion, into two parts. And again, that's the same as our denominator over here. So let's rewrite their fraction and that's two-thirds. And again, we split each one of those thirds into two separate portions. Oops, little error there. Two separate portions. So both the numerator and the denominator are multiplied by two. We'll simplify that further. That becomes three-sixths plus four-sixths. And, of course, now that we have like units, we can do our adding. So that is 7 6. And we know that we can decompose that 7 6 into 6 6 plus 1 6. And that equals 1 plus 1 6, which equals 1 and 1 6. Okay, we've related that for you now. And I'm going to show you a little shortcut that I use with my class. Now that we have modeled this extensively and we understand how it works, we want to get to the point where we have our common denominators and our equivalent fractions. Let's take a look at our original equation here. Let's go back to blue. I have our expression, rather, one-half plus two-thirds. Well, in case you haven't noticed, our common denominator, and most of my classes already notice, is the product of the two existing denominators. So we know that the common denominator is going to be 6. So if we simply multiply our 2 times my 3, I get a 6. So let's do that. 2 times 3 equals 6. That's our common denominator both of the fractions left 6. Now, in, instead of going through this whole procedure, right, instead of multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by 3, we've already done that over here. Now, I can cross-multiply. And I'm going to look over here. I'm going to multiply my 3 times my 1, and I get a 3. And that becomes my 3 over here, 3, 6. Now, let's do the other side. I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 2, but a quick shortcut here is 2 times 2 is 4. So we end up with 3 plus 4, and that would be 7, but we're going to write the problem out. So that would be 4, 6, and the answer is 7, 6. Again, we know that 7, 6 can be decomposed and turned into 1 and 1, 6. Let's do another. All right. Well, uh, now that I've shown you that shortcut, I'm going to go over it again. But I'm also going to give you examples that where that shortcut's not the best thing to do. So don't think that that is always the best thing. There are some situations in which there are better alternatives. 
So we're going to look at our problem again. And we're going to see that we have 4 times 7. That's our denominator. So 4 times 7 is 28. So we'll make those denominators both 28. I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to 7 times 3 is 21. And I have 4 times 1 is 4. So we're going to fill that in. And now we find the sum of our two numerators. We get 25 20 eighths. We're doing the same thing. It's just a simpler way to do it. And again, since we've modeled this so many times and we've discussed it, uh, I think it's time to introduce this shortcut. Let's do another. Now here's one where the shortcut's not necessarily the best idea. We could do it that way. But I'm going to uh, also give you an alternative strategy. Because if we multiplied the two denominators, we end up with a denominator of 54. That's a pretty big denominator. So I'm going to now try to find a common denominator that is somewhat smaller. The way I do that is to look at my two uh, denominators. I'm going to look at my greatest denominator. Of the two denominators, the greatest is 9. I'm going to think of my multiples of 9. So let's put a little thought bubble over here. My multiples of 9 are 9. 18, 27. All right, well, now I'm going to look at which of these multiples of 9 are divisible by 6. 9, no, but 18 is divisible by 6 because 3 times 6 is 18. And you know that 2 times 9 is 18 as well. So we're going to set this up. So I'm going to multiply 5 ninths times 2 times 2. Now I know I need to multiply 6 times 3 to get 18, so I'm going to have 5, 6, let's extend that, times 3, times 3. Now I get 10 eighteenths plus 15 eighteenths. The sum is 25 eighteenths. Working with the smaller numbers is definitely uh, an easy way to go. It also means that we don't have, we're less likely to have to do a lot of simplifying. So now we're going to decompose this into 18 eighteenths plus 7 eighteenths. We know that's equal to 1 and 7 eighteenths. So again, using the cross multiplication is not always the best approach. I could show it to you. In fact, I will. So I have 5 ninths plus 5 six. We end up with 54 as our common denominator. And now I end up with 45 and 30. And I and, uh, find the sum, and I get 75 54s. We can get the same answer by doing some simplification. Both of these numbers are divisible by 3 at minimum. So I know that because the sum of both of these digits, 7 plus 5 is 12, divisible by 3. Pi plus 4 is 9, divisible by 3. And as you can see, we've now introduced uh, a little extra work here. So now we do the division. 75 divided by 3 and 54 divided by 3. We end up with 25 eighteenths once again, and we can decompose that into 1 and 7 eighteenths. Again, we're working with larger numbers, and this one's not too bad, but I think it's, in my opinion, it's, it's always a good idea to look for common multiples that are not as large. We need to be flexible about our strategies and there's again some other situations involving three add-ins where the uh, finding the common multiples is the better approach. Here's another example. Now this one I call this uh, the small to large strategy. 
and I look at my two denominators. I have a 4 and I have an 8. Can I multiply one of my denominators to get to the other one? Indeed, I can multiply 4 times 2 to get 8. So the easiest thing to do here is to convert one of this, the 1 fourth, to the eighths. And we don't have to do anything with the other add end. So 1 times 2 is 2, and 4 times 2 is 8. So we have 2 eighths plus 9 eighths equals 11 eighths. Again, we can decompose that to 8 eighths plus 3 eighths equals 1 and 3 eighths. Always look for that strategy. Again, we could get into cross multiplying, but it's really easier to just be flexible about our thinking. It's a great shortcut, but I think that it's worth keeping other approaches in your uh, set of tools. Okay, here's one where common multiples really don't make much sense. Because 5 and 3 is 15, well, uh, we don't have common multiples other than 15. If I think of my multiples of 5, it's 5, 10, 15. And that gets us to where we would be if we cross multiplied. So again, we're going to find our common denominators by multiplying the two denominators. 5 times 3 is 15. And now we're going to do our cross multiplying. 3 times 1 is 3. 5 times 2 is 10. And we get 13 fifteenths. And we're all set with that one. Here's another example that can be solved without cross multiplying, and it will give you a smaller denominator. Hence, you'll work with smaller numbers. We'll do it uh, by looking for a common uh, denominator first, uh, by looking at common multiples. So we're now going to list uh, the multiples of our greater of the two denominators, and that would be 6. So I have 6, 12, 18. Well, I can see that 12 is divisible by 4, so that's our common denominator. Most of us could uh, do this in our head, but we'll do it out. So I have 3 fourths times 3 over 3 plus 5 sixths times 2, we can do it like this as we do in the module book there, times 2 times 2. And now we have our common denominators. We'll uh, find the product of each. We have 9 twelfths and we have 10 twelfths. We'll find the sum of those two and we have 19 twelfths. We'll decompose that into 12 twelfths plus 7 twelfths, and that equals 1 and 7 twelfths. We could also cross multiply that. Uh, that would give us a common denominator of 24. It's not too much of a problem, but realize that if you use that strategy, you're going to have to go through the additional step of uh, simplifying your fractions. Again, a lot of us could simply convert these to fractions to our twelfths uh, by doing it in our heads. Let's do another example. Okay, this problem is different in that we have three add ends. That changes things a little bit. We can choose to find a common denominator for all three. Sometimes that's the best thing to do. And sometimes uh, it might be easier to just work with a pair of uh, the add ends at first. So let's uh, work with our uh, common denominator. I have the strategy of just uh, working with my largest denominator and find the multiples. So I have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Well, all of those are divisible by 2 because they're all even numbers. So the only thing we have to worry about is divisible by 3. So we have 4, no, 8, no, 12, yes. So our common denominator is 12. So we'll convert each one of these, 2 thirds times 4 times 4 plus 1 fourth times 3 times 3 and we'll have 1 half 
times 6 and times 6. So we end up with 8 twelfths and 3 twelfths and 6 twelfths. I'll find the sum. 8 and 3 is 11 plus 6 is 17. We can decompose that into 12 twelfths plus 7 twelfths equals 1 and 7 twelfths. Let's explore, let's explore another strategy. I could, using the associative property or even the commutative property, decide to uh, work any pair of these at once. So I'm going to choose the, uh, the 2, uh, the two half and the 1 fourth. Well that's easy enough because I can now simplify that by finding a common denominator. We know that 1 half is 2 fourths, so 2 thirds plus 1 fourth plus 2 fourths equals 2 thirds plus 3 fourths. Now we can easily use our cross multiplication strategy. I'm going to find my common denominator of 12. We're going to cross multiply. 4 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 is 9. 8 plus 9 is 17 twelfths. Again, decomposing it to 1 and 7 twelfths. Here we have a word problem. Whitney says that to add fractions with different, different denominators, you always have to multiply the denominators to find the common unit. For example, 1 fourth plus 1 sixth equals 6 twenty fourths plus 4 twenty fourths. Show Whitney how she could have chosen a denominator smaller than 24, then solve the problem. Well, again, we're going to use our multiple strategy. And I look at my two denominators. I have a 4 and a 6. I choose the greater of the two and write out some multiples. 6, 12, 18, and we'll go to 24. Now I'm going to look at those and see which of those are divisible by 4. I'm looking for the least divisible by 4. The 6 is not divisible by 4, but the 12 is. So we can choose 12 as our common denominator. So we will have 1 fourth times, well, let's, let's rewrite that. Do it in the form that we see in our teacher's guide. We have 1 fourth times 3 times 3 plus 1 sixth. We'll have to multiply that, both the numerator and the denominator, by 2. And we now get 3 twelfths, and we get 2 twelfths, and we get 5 twelfths. And we can solve the other problem if we like. We'd find out that that came out to 10 twenty-fourths. And of course we can simplify 10 twenty-fourths because both the numerator and the denominator are even. Therefore, they're both divisible by 2, and if we divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2, we get 5 twelfths, so the answer is the same. Okay, another one from our problem set. Madame Curie made some radium in her lab. She used two-fifths kilograms of radium in an experiment, in an, in an experiment and had one and one-fourth kilograms left. How much radium did she have at first? All right, tape diagram. Let's reread. She made some radium in her lab. She used two fifths of the radium in an experiment and had one and one fourth kilogram left. Partition it into two parts. We have two fifths and we have one and one fourth. We need to know the whole. How are we going to perform that? Well, we can uh, change the order of this if we like. So I'm going to put 1 and 1 fourth first, plus 2 fifths. I'm going to decompose 1 and 1 fourth. And that equals 1 plus 1 fourth plus 2 fifths. We'll solve the fractional part first. I'll use the cross multiplication this time. 1 plus 
I have 5 times 1 is 5, 4 times 5 is 20, plus 4 times 2 is 8, and again the common denominator is 20. Now I'm going to solve the fractional part. I have 1 plus 13 twentieths equals 1 and 13 twentieths. This last one's from our homework, and it's a little bit more complicated than some of the ones that we've done for homework in the past few days. So we'll lay it out for you, but it's up to you to solve it. Joe spends two-fifths of his money on a jacket and three-eighths of his money on a shirt. He spends the rest on a pair of pants. What fraction of his money does he use to buy his pants? We're going to represent all his money as one whole. We don't know how much money, but we know that one can represent all his money. We have two-fifths spent on a jacket. We have three-eighths spent on a shirt. And the rest is um, pants. We should know by now how to solve that problem. We have one whole, and we have two known quantities that make that up, so we're going to have to deal with those. We could do it a couple ways. We could start with our one, and then subtract the fractions one at a time, or we could find the sum of the fractions and subtract it from the one whole.